Hello and welcome to another episode of Mike and Dave's Hi-Fi Riff. I'm Mike Evans. And I'm David Price. And David, on this week's Hi-Fi Riff, what are we going to be talking about? Well, it's the uh, Riga Apollo CD player, Mike. I know you, um, you're a streaming guy these days. You, you've forgotten what CD players do. But I can demonstrate, if you like, because um, I've got one here. <laughs> one you made earlier. I've got one. I've got a CD player. Yeah. I've got a really good CD player because you sold it to me. Oh, did, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so, I've got a really nice Sony yes. CDP something or other. Well, there we go. So that's a great segue because I think this, this has got a Sony display in it. Really, albeit with a um, with a r- uh, red filter on it. That's cool. Um, it's just it's just a guess, and sorry, Riga, if I've got that wrong. Uh, but uh, it okay. should be. Is it coming on? It's not. No, oh, okay. no, no, we've killed it. Oh, that's, um, well, that's because the, the plugs the, the come plugs, out. The, the mains plugs come out. That's so. okay. I really like it actually <laughs> aesthetically. I think it looks amazing, and it's got one of the most gorgeous uh, uh, opening. Uh, mechanisms to insert the CD yep. I've, I think I've ever seen yes. it's just absolutely sensational um, really well thought of really well yeah. really well designed so well would you like to demonstrate the um, the uh, uh, CD mechanism Mike yeah well, how do I do the it? door hey, what you do push I do? it up basically push it that way yeah yeah there we go oh yeah it's like Star Trek isn't it it looks so, like it's like the Starship yeah. en- Enterprise coming up yeah that is just so, fantastic and then we've got the we've got the CD in here that's it. You don't have to turn it yourself. No, no, no. That's good. There's a, there's a motor in there to do Look it. At by. That. Look at that. I just think so. that's absolutely, that's magnificent, isn't it? It's a lovely kind of cantilever. It is. It's a bit like, it reminds me of the driver's side wiper on the TR7. And, and the, the, the <laughs> display on the front um, reminds me of, uh, of, a, a Cass- uh, of a Texas Instruments TI-30 yeah. calculator yeah. from sort yeah. of the late 70s. Yes. So Because uh, it's sort of those, um, those lovely sort of joined up yes. uh, LEDs, uh, LEDs yeah. yeah, which are really, really sweet. Yeah. So um, let's see if we can turn it upside down and get it to say Shell Oil. Shall yes, we? that's right. Yes, or something rude. <laughs> so yeah, yeah quite, yeah. quite. It's a family show, Mike. Let's, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll keep it let's shallow. Not show, oil. show you how to write a sweary word on your on you your could 1978 do, calculator. You could do SO Oil as well, couldn't you? <laughs> you Remember could. That? Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so so this is. Uh, I want to say discontinued, but it kind of is, kind of isn't, isn't yeah. it? Because you can actually still buy them new today. If you if you go online, I've noticed there's two or three, which is which yeah. is still sort of two or three different places still selling them new. Yes, although um, you'll be buying one of those uh, <laughs> at the end of the riff, as you normally do. <laughs> yes, so. well, it's, these get quite so, expensive for me. Yeah. These hi-fi riffs. Yeah. Um, but actually, in terms of price. It's yeah. not too disastrous. It's not a no. bank breaking CD player at all, is it? Seven hundred pounds. Fantastic. And um, the reason I wanted to do this is that I think it was about four or five years ago uh, I did a CD player group test for Hi-Fi Choice and it won. Um, and I think some of the other players um, were 1,200, 1,300 quid, something like that. And this was 700. And I wasn't expecting it. No, no. So um, no. It was, um, it's a really good sounding bit of kit. Yes. Um, Riga, I think, discontinued it in July... 2022 um but as we're recording this you can still buy it new uh, before mike buys the last one the last ever one um, <laughs> uh, but even if you buy it second hand you know in a year or two um i'd strongly recommend you think about it because it's such a great piece of kit for the money i think it's a fantastic yeah. player would you like to demonstrate the play function on this? So I just press play. Yes. There you go. There you Look go. at that. Excellent. I know it's not app controlled, Mike. No, 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 no. I can't do so, it by my phone. It's uh, it's not room ready either, so you're probably not interested. I'm just looking at the back so, panel as well and oh, seeing yeah. what, we've, what we've got there. So I, I forgot. And I can see some digital outputs, which I'm, is always a good sign. I've come up with a name for people like you, Mike. Okay, okay, I'm nervous. <laughs> who, who really like back panels. I'm only interested in the so, back panel. Because though. when we... <laughs> When we when we commented on this before, there was several people in the comments go, "Yeah, I really like looking at the back panels as well." So I I'm, we have some really dodgy <laughs> riff raff in our yes. viewers, don't we? Oh. So I'm gonna I've come up with a phrase. It's great. It's called a socket botherer. <laughs> <laughs> so you Excellent. are officially. The, the biggest socket botherer I've ever seen. That's just so. I'm just not sure what to say. <laughs> you're, you're not interested in the front panel. I really like <laughs> this lovely front panel here with the, uh, you know, with the, with the swanky display and the nice, uh, um, the nice, nice kind of no- knobs and buttons there. Very 
swish. And but I just want to know how, if we can upgrade it and yes. what I can plug it into. Absolutely. Yes. And, um, yeah. But I'm going to hand it over to you so you can explain to the viewers what you can plug it into. Do you know, I, you I, go. I've, got, I've got the answer for that. Um, and I think the answer is nothing. Because actually, I don't think I'd want to upgrade <laughs> this. I think it's great. Yeah. I don't think it needs an external DAC. Um, I, I just think it's a really, really complete all-in-one player. And for £700, it's a veritable hi-fi bargain. Yes. Uh, no two ways about it. Um, and, you know, despite having its optical out and its coaxial out, all good stuff. No, it just sounds great, just as it is. So I'd be staring at the front panel on this. Yeah. For, well, for a refreshing change. There we go. Um, I really, really like it. And um, I was... It's, it's hard to know quite what to expect with a, um, a sort of £700 CD player. Because... You know, we've heard so many, and some are mm, distinctly average. And in fact, all the way up to sort of fifteen hundred, two thousand pounds, we've still heard some distinctly average ones. But this is absolutely cracking. It really, it really is. is absolutely yeah. fantastic. And again, look, I'm going to talk about something we talk about often in our hi-fi riffs. It's really musical. Yeah. And and I think um, I think what we were both talking about earlier, and and I hope you guys kind of get this. And if you've if you've if you've had one or listened to one, you'll understand where we're coming from. We thought it was very similar to the Riga Planner 3, the yeah. Riga Planner 3 turntable. Yeah. So the Riga Planner 3 is a bit of a giant killer. Um, it's been in the industry for an awfully long time for a very simple reason. It just plays records beautifully. You know, really musical, proper foot tapping uh, turntable. You know, not the last word in hi-fi, um, but really, really excellent. And, and you, you struggle to beat it for the, for the price point, yeah. which is why its, it's longevity has yeah. been so good. But this is it, isn't it? This is the CD version of the it Riga is. Planner 3. Um, yeah. And it does. It has very similar sonic characteristics. Yeah. So it's got a nice fun bass. Yep. That kind of you know gets on it's with quite, it. It's quite light, but it's bouncy, isn't it? Light but bouncy. Yeah. It's detailed. Yeah. It images really nicely. Yep. Um, it just works. Yeah. It just works yeah. really well. And and I, I you know hats off to it for that. Yeah. I mean even the, the it it really is because I I I never made that connection actually to be honest even though I had like six CD players in front of me and I was working through them for for a week I never thought in terms of it being like a kind of digital Riga Planner 3 turntable yeah. um, but it really does have similar family sound it does tonally it's quite dry it's not quite as fruity as some some players around um, and, and, and the, the Planar 3 is too isn't it it's it's not as rich sounding as a Lin Sondek for example no um, and um, the um, the bass on, on this is light but supple uh, but it's got a lovely mid band. Mm. Really works. It really does so much in the mid band. It's very intricate. Kind of draws you in, uh, and it's rhythmic and enjoyable. Uh, again, there are more detailed things around, but the, the price. What's not to like? I think. And and yeah. I I mean Roy Gandhi, who's been the sort of founder and and owner of Riga from the beginning. I actually think he's he's got a really great pair of ears. I, yeah. I really do. Now he yeah. he knows what good stuff sounds like. Um, he certainly knows how to make some really good products for a price point. Um, yeah. And I remember, you know, when the Riga 3 came out and it had an unlimited lifetime warranty. Mm. You know, so if it ever broke, then you, know, you get it mended for nothing. Um, and that was sort of real sort of, that's how good our product is. Yeah. You know, it was, it was, it was a hats off to that. Yeah. Um, and this is pretty bulletproof as well. You know, this yeah. God, it's actually it weighs a ton, this thing. You know, yeah. it's, it's got some quality components in it. Um, yep. And speaking of which, the DAC set is... It's a Wolfson. I'll just um, put my uh, white Please. lab coat on and get my pens out Yes, on my top pocket. And speaking out of noise. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a Wolfson WM8742, um, which... Um, uh, does that work well? I don't know. Not very good, yes. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so I sounded a bit like John Major there. It fitted uh, in with the level of geekiness. <laughs> proper level of geekiness. Yeah, but the... A funny thing is, is that all these people on um, on hi-fi forums kind of getting incredibly obsessed with which type of deck the X or Y has got and has it got the latest this or that and all the rest of it. Uh, this has got um, a, a Wolfson, I think, that came out around 2009 or 2010. Um, so, yes. Um, so, yeah. Um, 
it's it's not it's a long way away from being state of the art. And, and we've heard the Wolfsons perform really really well before, haven't we? Because in, yeah. in the Cambridge Audio Player, yeah, um, the the MXN ten. That's it. Yeah, uh, it so, it sounds. Yeah. So they sounded amazing. We in fact, yeah. we we did a riff on it, and we were we were commenting on how how good these quote unquote old fashioned yeah. DACs sounded. Yeah, um, we were so impressed. And and I think the the conclusion we drew there, which we can also draw today, is it's all about. What you do with them, yeah, you know, clearly yeah. the implementation. Cambridge have got it right. Riga have got it right. Yeah, and they've made these walks yeah. and that sound yeah. fantastic. So absolutely, getting the power supplies right and the uh, you know the the sort of the the, the general um, quality of build on the analog output stage, all that kind of stuff um, is is a, is a very big thing and. Um, so you can take a, a decent DAC and make a CD player that sounds really good out of it. Um, and you can also, interestingly, take a, a very good DAC and make a CD player that doesn't sound as good as it should be. Yes. Um, and, um, but this is kind of a very um, you know, a familiar DAC. It's in so many things. I think also in the, in the RCAM R DAC, which was a big seller you know, 10 years ago or so. Um, but it, that doesn't really matter. It, it's just... Um, uh, does so much for seven hundred pounds. Um, very difficult to mark it down in any respect for that price. I think, mm, mm. Um, and better still, the actual um, build quality of the machine is superb. Um, at, you know, as you say, this kind of it lovely, lovely. Uh, um, loading mech is, is uh, arrangement is 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 fantastic. I, I really like top loading CD players. They kind of feel. You know, it's more of a sense of occasion, isn't there? It really is. Um, yeah. And um, yeah. Uh, the the display and so on is great. And the latest version, the previous Riga Apollo, I think was the Apollo R, which had a much more kind of Fisher Price layout on the, you know, like clunky, silly buttons on the front and stuff. It felt a lot cheaper. And this uh, feels quite expensive, actually. We, we plugged yeah. it into your main system. Yep. Um, so we plugged it into David's... David's um, Yamaha NS one thousands and Sony pre powers and all of the you know, all this lovely stuff which he has here because uh, obviously you can tell by uh, our setup we're in we're in sunny Wiltshire today um, and when you played it I actually thought originally you'd taken the digital out and put it into your called Hugo TT <laughs> which is a sort of you know three thousand yeah. pound DAC and you hadn't yeah. it just it was just sounding that good you know yeah. within your system yeah now I'm sure you could have plugged it into your Hugo TT and it would then take it to another level. Yes. I get yeah. that completely. Yeah. But, you know, we're talking 700 yeah. pounds. You know, Absolutely. Just... Well, you get with a TT2, um, I've had that driving a TT2, um, there'd be considerably more detail, grippier bass, slightly stronger bass, you know, and more intricate treble and better sound staging front to back. But but what this does so well is it's just fun. It really is. It? Yeah, it's so, great. Um, it's great. And and it's it's in yeah. no way would you call it crude or no. harsh or anything like that. No. So no. you don't listen to it and think, God, if only it didn't have X or Y. It's already very good. Uh, but the main thing is it's not kind of dreary and dull and boring. It, it really yes. goes for it, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. And, and um, I think both of us, we started our hi-fi journey, our first ever proper turntables with the Riga Planner 3s. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, if this was your if this was your first ever proper CD player, yeah. you'd be just as thrilled as we were when we yeah. got our Riga Planner 3s. Absolutely. You know, just, just fantastic. So, um, absolutely. So if, if you're looking for a disc-based, you know, a disc transport, and many people are um, don't, still. Don't want to break the bank. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, either buy one new or buy one a, a fairly new one second hand for 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 you know four or five hundred quid, uh, and it's it's um, it, it's hard to fault. I think. It's, it's, I think it's absolutely glorious. I yeah. really do. Yeah, I really really like it. Um, interestingly, so on a previous riff, we we reviewed the Edwards Audio integrated amplifier. Yeah, I think this would work really well with that. Yeah, I think that would be a great combination. So then you're yeah. looking at eleven hundred and fifty quid for yeah. your for your amp and your CD player. And then you just need to find a pair of reasonably high efficient yes. speakers to go with that. Yeah. You know, I don't know. I don't quite know what you could buy, but you could certainly find something nice for, you know, three hundred pounds. Say sure. some of the Q acoustics, perhaps. Absolutely, basic Q um, acoustic or yeah. acoustic energy entry level acoustic energy A one hundred and five mm. that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and in fact, the yeah. Q acoustics we did a very early riff on, and we were really impressed with. Yeah. Um, so you know, for not a lot of money, yeah. you've got a really superb. Uh, hi-fi system there and I love that 
Yeah, I love that. I, I, you know, we're we're very fortunate, you and I, that we get to listen to some, you know, amazingly expensive kit. But for me, I, there's still a huge joy yeah. in getting a marvelous sound yeah. without spending, you know, ridiculous amounts of yeah. cash. So there we go. Let's do a let's do a riffometer on it. Yeah, I mean, is, I hate, it, is it a retro riffometer or is well, it a current yes, riffometer? It depends uh, on what day of the uh, <laughs> the year you're watching this. Thing. Yes. But I mean, I think uh, let's uh, just as a normal new thing. Um, I mean, for me, it's got to be a nine, um, you know, in terms of the value for money, overall build quality, the sound, all the rest of it. Um, and I, I, you know, I'm a bit grumpy. I don't like giving out top marks. No, but, sure. Um, sure. For me, nine is pretty much uh, 11 with, with many people. Um, yeah. I, 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 it has to be really special for me to get a nine, to give a nine. And sure. I'll, I'll do one. How about you? Yeah, no, good solid nine for me. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, 100% all the way. I'm yeah. really impressed with it. Yeah. Uh, and, and look, dare I say, and even knowing Riga's reputation, I was a lot more impressed with it than I even thought I was going to be. Yeah. So that's, that's yeah. as, as high a praise as I can give it. So uh, Riga Research, guys, well done. Yeah. Fantastic. Loving this, the Apollo CD player. And thank you so much again for watching another episode of Mike and Dave's Hi-Fi Riff. And we'll see you at the next one. Thanks a million. Bye. Bye.